Nanny Bakali is President and Chief Executive of GE Europe and Chief Executive of GE Germany. The US conglomerate employs 90,000 people in Europe and makes 24 billion euros of revenue there. A chemical engineer by training, Mr. Bacalli started his career at GE in 1975. Mr. Bacalli, thank you very much for talking to the FT today. You have a number, a significant number of operations across Western and Eastern Europe. What do the state of GE's businesses in Western Europe tell you about the recovery in the Eurozone? I think we're going through a, what I would define a mild recovery. And it is not a uniform recovery. There are some areas that have peaks of performance. You take, for instance, the Nordic area because of the oil and gas. You take Germany that has continued to perform quite well along this very difficult period of time that we had. Even Spain is beginning to recover. The government took some very tough actions that were necessary, but they are showing the results right now. If I, if I have a concern, I have a concern about Italy and I have a concern about France. France is in need of reforms and we need to see President Hollande creating this kind of reforms and moving forward on this kind of reforms. And Italy needs to fix the administration, the administrative process, because it's still, uh, it's still full of problems. And Italy is a country that has a strong industrial base, but is not supported by the public administration the way it should be supported. Given that you've got um, significant operations in Eastern Europe and indeed in Russia itself, how concerned are you about the rising tension between Russia and the West over Ukraine? I'm not concerned about the Eastern European part, the Central Eastern European part, because they work mostly for Western Europe and for the rest of the world. Where I'm concerned is in Russia, because we do have important operations there. And, you know, this kind of tension is never helping a good, a good business, a solid business. So that's the part that is concerning me the most. Are you currently taking any measures at your businesses? In no, we are not. We are trying to operate uh, as in no, under normal conditions, as normal as possible. And honestly, we hope that the crisis will subside. When, um, when making a decision over where to invest in Europe or where to expand investments, what are the most important considerations for GE? There are three criteria that are important. The first one is the technology. We are always investing in technologies that are complementary to the package that we have. We try to complete the chain of technologies that we have. The second one is the availability of a market. We need to have a market big market, but I'm not talking only about a national market. In the case of Europe, for instance, you're talking about the whole of Europe, and in the case of other markets, the whole of Southeast Asia, and, and, and so on. And the third important criteria is the one of the availability of talent. So uh, when, you, when you buy an asset, when you buy a company, it is also very important to be able to retain the talent that belongs to that company, because generally they are the ones that brought it to the point that made it interesting for GE to acquire and so we need to work on the retention. What do you think Europe's competitive advantages are going forward and what, what should governments and European institutions be doing to encourage that competitive advantage? The competitive advantage is in the capability of creating technology. Technology is important for Europe and if you look at the last uh, since 2011 the acquisitions that our company made, the GE made, 60% of those acquisitions were made in Europe, which means there is technology in Europe. What we miss in Europe is the capability to expand this technology all over the world. And that is what, what has created some problems. You think about the fact that the MP3, for instance, was created in Germany, but it's not, it was not marketed and sold out of Germany, is a typical example of what is happening. Now, what can the institutions do? The institutions can continue to promote technology, making sure that there is a strong cooperation between the industry and the universities. And in order to be able to do so, universities need to be well funded and well equipped. The second part that we have is really we need to have more of a single market, more of an integrated market. So Europe has to be, in my mind, Europe has to become more united rather than less united. So we need to go through convergence rather than divergence. And the third one is to bring back manufacturing. Manufacturing is always creating the wealth for a region, for a country. You know, my concept is the one we need to buy low, we need to add several steps of technology, and we need to sell high. Look at what they've been able to do in China. 
China is sitting on a lot of reserves for a very simple reason that they have elected to be the manufacturing center for the world. Now, we need to bring back some of that manufacturing. It's happening already in the United States. There are several initiatives in the United States to re-manufacture, re-manufacture in the United States and so on. We need to do exactly the same also in Europe. On that issue of closer integration, how concerned is GE about the possibility of the United Kingdom leaving the European Union? Well, more than GE, I could speak from a personal point of view, and I really, really hope that England is not going to leave the, 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 the European Union. Uh, it wouldn't be good for England. It would be good for Europe. Again, as I said before, we need to converge towards a more united Europe to build strength. Think about the fact that even mighty Germany in the future, compared to China on one side and the United States on the other side, what can they do? You know, they get squashed in the middle. On the other side, if you look at fully integrated Europe with 450 million people market and so on, that is a real power, a real powerhouse. That becomes a, a reality that everybody in the world has to deal with. It becomes an extremely important market, the most important market in the world. So let's work to unite, let's not work to divide. Is the remote, in your view, possibility that the UK leaves the European Union, is it affecting GE's investment decisions in the UK? I, in this moment, I personally don't think so, but let's cross the bridge when we are there. But honestly, I don't think so. And what about the prospect of Scottish independence? Is that affecting your investment decisions there? That's another one that I really personally hope is not going to happen. Again, let's work to converge, toward convergence, not towards uh, divergence. Do you think it would be negative for the Scottish economy and business? It's difficult for me to assess it in this moment, but I would say that that would be a difficult, a very difficult moment to overcome because Scotland is integrated in the UK from all points of view, industrial, monetary, financial, fiscal, everything. To cut it loose is certainly not an easy thing to do and I am sure that there would be some consequences that we cannot understand right now, but some consequences that are unpleasant consequences. Nani Bacali, thank you very much indeed for talking to us. Thank you very much.